Hey church, our psalm this week comes from Psalm 32. It's a little bit of a different tone than what we've been uh, studying as of late with our psalm. This one, in fact, is pretty cool because it talks about um, forgiveness of sins and how we deal with our transgressions, how we deal with our mess-ups, how we deal with our sin against God. It talks about, it first starts off by saying, Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and in whose spirit is no deceit. And it's broken up into three main sections, each separated by this word selah, which means a pause or um, just a moment uh, to ponder. Most people, there's, we don't really know exactly what it means, but most people take it as like a breath, as a pause, um, just to reflect on what was just said. And the three sections basically cover three different parts of confession of how we should come to God with, um, with our sins. The first part talks about how he kept quiet. He didn't even acknowledge his sin. And it talks about when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. Um, for day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. Uh, and then it goes on a little bit more. But uh, I don't know if you felt that way with sin in your life, how you just feel this weight sometimes that the Lord is trying to, to get your attention and, and let you know that this is not an okay thing for your life. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin and it tells us that we're, we're not doing right, we're not following God's ways. And so maybe you you can relate to this passage how you feel the weight sometimes of your sin. And then there's a Selah, there's a pause section there. Then it goes into the next part and it says, talks about acknowledging our sin before God. It says, I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. You didn't cover up the iniquity anymore. He confessed it. He said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Awesome. So that's an awesome section there where we come before God with our sin and he will forgive us for the guilt of our sin. And then again, there's a selah, there's a pause. And then for the, the next section, he goes on to encourage everyone else to go and do the same thing, to go and confess, to bring these things before the Lord. It says, you are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. So we come to a God and we confess these things to a God who is quick to forgive, quick to have mercy, quick to pour out love. I'm reminded of that passage where uh, the woman was caught in adultery and, and Jesus said, the, the one who has no sin, be the first one to cast the stone. And after everyone had left, she looked up and he said, go and sin no more. And so we end this by just saying that the Lord, it goes on at the end to say that it says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. He will counsel you and watch over you. See, the Lord doesn't just convict us of sin just to punish us, just to say we messed up. Our, our, our God is a loving God who wants us to do what is right the way he, he created us to live, how to love one another, how to live right with one another. And so when we're corrected of our sin, it's so that we can better love one another. It's so that our soul can be at rest with the Lord. And so, yes, we need to deal with our sin problem, not just with our relationship with, with God, but also with one another. Because sin, all sin wants to do is to separate us from God and separate us from one another. And so with this great psalm, it's a great reminder for us today that we do, we need to come to the Lord with our sin and confess our sin to him. And he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And the psalm ends by saying, Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. So it reminds us to praise the Lord because, again, he is good, he is faithful, and he is willing to forgive our sin when we come before him and confess it to him. So if you'd like to read this week, I encourage you to uh, get a hold of me and we'll sign one of these verses to you. Uh, hopefully you now understand the context of your verse and uh, we can read it together as a church family. Look forward to hearing at church, and we'll see you soon.